Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions. Well, tonight that question is what's in the box in regards to this. This is Marvel Champions, the card game, the living card game from Fantasy Flight that has been hyped up by a ton of different people. Um, which begs the question, why am I even talking about this and opening this up? Um, because I do an unboxing video for everything I pick up and own. Uh, note, this is mine. This was purchased. Really looking forward to digging into this game. I have played the intro mission and I was sold. I am not a huge fan of the other living card games Fantasy Flights put out. None have really caught me, but I was really enamored with this the one time I got to try it. And I am looking forward to diving in more. But the first step to that is going to be opening up this box, sorting out the cards before I can play. And I figure, why not record an unboxing so we can together discover what you get in this box? This is a one two, four player living card game, which means it's non-collectible. Everything you need to play is in this box. You will be able to buy future expansions. Trust me, there's a ton of them already. But when you buy them, they're set expansions with all the cards you need. There's no collectible aspect. There's no rares. There's no uncommons. You pick up a new hero, you got a new hero and everything you need for that new hero. Now, that said, it is a living card game, so you can customize your decks. So when you go buy that new hero, you might be able to find cards in that new hero set that you want to use in your favorite hero set. So that is an aspect of the game that, that gets into the whole living card game, collectible card game. But no rarities, no blind booster packs or anything like that. Well, let's take a look at what you do get inside this box, though. All right, there we go. Next, we're going to crack this open. I have not seen what this game looks like right out of the box. I've only seen people's copies and how they've sorted them. All right, we start off with the rule book, which should be followed by another rule book, because yes, this is Fantasy Flight. Fantasy Flight likes to do a learn to play book and a rules reference. And I got to say, uh, the artwork is shock like striking, not shocking. I knew what I was getting here, but like I just it pops right that, that you're like that. No, no question about it. This is a Marvel game. So we're going to look, flip through the learn to play book quickly. I'm going to keep this off to the side here. So we're going to flip through this quickly, just kind of go through it. I have read this book. It explains what a living card game is. It shows off the components. One of the things I was a little disappointed by is it doesn't explain all the different cards and card backs here in the components. It just says 393 cards and then breaks them up into three types, which made when I first played this a little difficult to sort everything. There is going to be a bit of assembly required in a bunch of tokens. Um, then we get into how to set up the first game. It shows you how to set up your initial deck to play the game um, and gets right into it. And then how you'd set up your thing and the key concepts of the game and the resource costs and the player phase and everything. Well, I got to say is I found the rule book to be extremely well laid out, uh, presented in a logical order that onboards you to the game well. Uh, it also provides some cool Marvel artwork along the way and lots of little call outs that explain everything. So I'm just going to flip through the rest of this pretty quickly so you get a little overview here. And now you finally get to the description of what the cards do and what type of cards they are. So they kind of walk you through how to play it and then kind of how to sort everything else. And then they, you get your starter decks. And the way this game works is you're going to pair up two things. You're going to pair up a character with a... Um, Aspect, I'm, I forget the term. Again, I've only played this once and only part of a, a, a beginner game. So like, for example, there's Black Panther with the protection deck and Iron Man with the aggression deck. One of the things you can do to customize this game is you can make Black Panther with the aggression deck. And these are the five characters that come with it. One thing to note, there are five characters in this box, but only four aspects, whatever those, what you're pairing it up with. So you'll know that She-Hulk is using aggression. So is Iron Man. Technically, you can't play this out of the box with both these characters in these configurations. I think that's important to know. Now, unlike other Fancy Flight living card games, there should be no real reason to buy two copies of the game. This isn't a game where you're going to want extra copies of the rare abilities or anything like that. Of course, there is rules for customizing your deck, then some set scenarios and reference on the back. Then we get to... Whenever you're playing and you don't understand what to do, look it up in here. And this is just alphabetical. It's a lot drier. It doesn't look as pretty. It's not laid out as well. But all it is is a reference, and that's what it's for. You should be able to figure out everything you need to know to play here. And then when situations come up during the game, you grab this. This is actually thicker than the core rulebook. I'm not going to bother going page by page because there's no point. 
Uh, we're looking at a big 23 pages of reference. And here's where they finally tell you what all the different things on the cards mean. So this is Fancy Flight's format. I don't love it, but it's better than some other games I played where there's just too much data in the original rulebook and you end up having to flip everywhere. Then we get to punch outs, which are also in shrink. So we're going to. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it. I, I will punch this just so you can see the extra bits in here. So we're going to get rid of the shrink again. All right. So we've got a number of different tokens here used for different things. Uh, tracking health and damage and um, what do you, I can't remember the terms of the game from the game. And then on the other side, uh, these are the same. So I probably could have left it in there and then various dials. So you have dials for your character's health as well as the enemy's health and how far they're progressing their plots. Then we have a shocking thing for fans of Fantasy Flight games, and that is a box insert. Fantasy Flight is famous for their cardboard trough inserts just meant to get the game to you in good shape. And I have to applaud them for providing an actual box insert. That said, the one thing I know is there's no actual dividers to go in these slots. So I don't know why they decided to do that, but that's not what we're worried about here. So here you have the three different status effects from the game and cards to represent them. They give you an awful lot. So I don't know if you can have a lot of characters stunned, confused, and tough at once, but these are the three status effects, at least in the base game. They're two-sided, but same thing on both sides. And those are just to reference if one of those status effects affects your character. That's a nice easy one that I'm just gonna put right back in here. These are the plastic pieces for assembling the dials. I don't think I need to pull out the grommets so you can see them. Now, what I don't know is how these are going to be sorted. Okay, very cool. So when you start the game the first time you play, it tells you to play Spider-Man using the starter deck. Then it says, if you wish to play two-player, there it is, perfect, use Captain Marvel. So this is awesome. When I played this game, I bought a friend's used copy, and the cards were all mixed. So having to make these to play the first time really stank. So it's kind of cool that here you go. The first time you play, first time onboarding, great onboarding. We talk about onboarding on our podcast all the time. Great onboarding. Here, you want to play Spider-Man? Here, you want to play Captain Marvel? Great. Oh, who are we fighting? Well, we're going to fight Rhino, who's using his starter deck. And here it is, sealed up, ready to go. And I got to say right there, huge props to Fantasy Flight for this. Then we have the rest of the cards all just kind of chunked in together. Like they are divided up somehow. But the rest of the cards are kind of mixed in. And I love that. So what I am going to do is show off. I'm not going to open Captain Marvel. We're going to put her back. But I am going to open up Spider-Man so you can see the quality of some of these cards. Here we go. Spider-Man. We start with this. Just a card that shows you his starter deck and a table of contents, a checklist to remind me of uh, buying old collector's cards, telling you what you should have in Spider-Man's deck. I'm just going to slide that in there. Then we have the Peter Parker card. A big part about this game is you can be in your Peter Parker format or your Spider-Man format and that changes how to play. This is not meant to be an how to play. I'm not going to teach you how to play, but I'm just showing you that's two sides of the card. I love the artwork. I don't know if it's from comics based on the quality difference from, say, that picture to that picture. I am guessing they did not create new artwork for this game, but used existing just because those two are such different style. Um, the artist is credited. No, I do not see an artist credited on here which is, is slightly disappointing. So you have the Spider-Man card. Then you're going to have allies that go in, in in his deck. So you have an ally here, a black cat, who can come out and do stuff for you. You're going to have event cards, which tend to be things Spider-Man does. So we have his spider senses. We've got backflip. We've got attack, event cards that are attacks, like the swinging web kick. Then we have a support card, which is Aunt May. Unlike an ally, she's not going to fight for you, but she's going to give you an ability. No, Aunt May only works when you're in Alter Ego, which makes perfect sense. Then you have upgrades, little bits of spider tools. More upgrades, including webbed up. Then we get two more allies. Now, these yellow cards are not from Spider-Man's deck. Remember how I mentioned you mash up your two decks, basically? This is from one of the other decks. I forget which deck. It's particularly from Justice. So you have Spider-Man with the Justice deck. So the Justice deck includes Jessica Jones, Daredevils, For Justice, Great Responsibility, The Power of Justice. Obviously, we have some defenders here, in interrogation rooms, surveillance teams, and other upgrades. 
Then we get into other cards. Now, these are the generic gray cards. So after you matched up your deck, you also get to put in any number of these gray cards. These are shared between all players. So again, we have a set deck here for Spider-Man that was pre-built when you start playing, which again, is going to have more allies, more events. I don't remember if there's upgrades. Um, some very important resource cards, because a big part of this game is generating resources. You get one of those for each of the things and additional support cards. Yeah, there's even an upgrade in here. Then we have what's called the Obligation. This card goes in the enemy's deck and can come up and has, is something your character's going to have to deal with it. Which, of course, you're talking Spider-Man and Peter Parker. You got an eviction notice that can come up. Then you get a set of villains specific to Spider-Man. So you end up with the highway robbery being done by Vulture, who has his own set of little cards. This actually gets put off to the side and may come up during play. So that's an example of a hero's deck. Now, again, there's a whole other one in here for Captain Marvel that's a starter set as well. Who you're going up against in your first battle is going to be against the Rhino. So we're going to open up this deck. We have the Rhino starter deck. And again, it's going to tell me the table contents. I'm putting this over here just to, again, define them up. So you have the Rhino card. And the thing is, it comes at different levels. Well, they only give you the level one and two cards at this point. So what happens is once you defeat his level one ability, he switches to level two and gets more powerful because, well, it's Rhino. Then you have what he's doing while well, the thing you're going to do with this, the, the mission you get with Rhino is the break in. So again, the card text is really nice here. You've got artwork and then you have a deck for Rhino, including all kinds of different things like his suit and he's going to charge the group. He's has his enchant enhanced ivory horn. He has Hydra mercenaries he can send against you and he's working with the Sandman and so on. So this is a whole villain deck that can come up, including these cool things, which are like little side things that come up in the middle of the quest that you have to deal with while you're battling him. And one of those is the bomb square scare. So part of this deck is a combination of the rhino deck and the bomb scare deck. And then again, we have more hydro people and all the various things the villain is going to do on their turn, which are yellow backed. So then when you have after that is a bunch more cards. So what I'm going to try to do is toss this in here. We're going to open this up and flip through these very quickly to just kind of show you what else you get in the core set for those who care with special attention paid to which heroes you get. All right, big old pack of cards. Mostly with the same back, but you should be able to, there we go, do this. So what I have here is the She-Hulk deck, who of course has a Jennifer Walters side and a She-Hulk side with all of her cards, which are of course purple and green, ground strike and so on. We're going to flipply go through flipply quickly go through that. So what I've done is put these in here as a divider. You know what? No, I'm just going to put, I don't know. I haven't decided a good place to divide these up. Oh, that black cat I missed. See that belongs in there. I don't want to mix these up next. We've got Mr. Stark, Tony Stark with Iron Man. Of course, one of his allies is war machine and repulsor blast and supersonic punch. And you'll know he has lots of items, lots of upgrades because well, it's Iron Man. But that shows how the game changes. So you have the Iron Man deck. Then we have T'Challa, the Black Panther set of cards. So here is the Black Panther deck. Again, you have T'Challa and the Black Panther side. Shuri being his, his um, unique ally and so on. Bunch of Wakanda cards and, of course, Vibranium. I have not played him, so I have no clue how he plays. Now, interestingly, the next thing we have are more Carol Danvers cards. So the reason for this is we, the other set I showed you, uh, actually, I didn't go through that set, is the starter set. Well, her full deck is a little more complicated. So we have cards for her. And then similarly, the Spider-Man is using the Justice deck, but not the full Justice deck. So these are additional Justice cards. Another set, which is the leadership set. So I could combine T'Challa with the leadership set, which I actually think makes a lot of sense. And these are the cards you get in the leadership set, which again are more events, upgrades, allies, and, and supports. Then we get to another character. We have Black Widow, which doesn't, oh, it's an ally, sorry. Oh, it's the protection deck, sorry. This shows again, I, I 
haven't used any of this stuff. So the protection deck is another one you would mash up with your chosen hero. And then here's a bunch more gray cards to pick from. And again, when you're building your decks, the gray cards are ones that everyone can use. You can mix, mix and match. We're going to squeeze that in here if I can. Yeah, perfect. Now we're going to open this up. This is obviously going to be all your uh, reference cards as well as the villain cards. So you had the level three of Rhino. Remember how I pointed out you only had the first two levels? Well, here's the level three card. Then we have Claw, who has three different levels. Um, probably a call, Claw Underground Distribution Center. So you have Claw, probably selling Vibranium. I, I haven't tried these. And I gotta admit, it's, it's the old school Claw, not the modern one. He has Armored Guards, Weapon Runners, Claw's Vengeance, Sonic Boom. So you have a whole Claw deck here. Then we have, it looks like Radioactive Man with Whirlwind, or no, these are just minions, gray minions. So they're probably meant to go with the Claw deck. Ultron, another very well-known villain in the Marvel Universe. Again, there's three levels of Ultron, Ultron's various plots, Ultron's drones. Of course, there's tons of Ultron drones, Rage of Ultron. Then the obligation cards looks like they're mixed in here because the obligation card for T'Challa is right here, which is Affairs of State with Killmonger being his unique character that he goes against. Um, legal wo work would be uh, She-Hulk's obligation. And of course, her personal challenge is going to be against Titania. Business problems would be Mr. Stark's issue. And then Whiplash is his featured enemy. And I think what we're left with is reference cards. Modok is in here. Again, uh, be careful when you're sorting your cards. <laughs> Figure out what goes with what. And then we have the villain phase reference and the hero phase reference, one for each potential player. That's it. A lot of cards with no quite like, okay, props, fantasy flight. You gave me a box insert. I, I think where are the dividers? How do, how do I sort this? I probably would have opened this pack if I had somewhere to put it. But that gives you a really good idea what the cards look like and the types of cards you get and which characters you get in the original box for Marvel Champions, the card game, a game I can't wait to just dive a little deeper into. We have Marvel Champions, the, the living card game from Fantasy Flight, a really popular hot new card game that I am really looking forward to playing. Based on what I saw in here, I'm extremely impressed. Fancy Flight gave us a box sensor. Honestly, it's not perfect. Um, I'm confused that they didn't give us dividers, but it's still so much better than a cardboard trough just meant to protect the cards for transit. Actually having a way to sort your cards is going to be fantastic, though having to homebrew. Uh, it, dividers, I guess it's a thing. I have index cards. I have other things I can use. That'll work. I'll figure something out. Um, what I'm really impressed by that you can see right during the unboxing is the onboarding here. The way the three starter decks to play the first game are actually like shrink wrapped separately is brilliant. You literally could sit this game down at the table, pull out those three decks. If you're playing solo, you play both heroes, you can play one hero, or you can play two player and sit down and learn the game right from there. I love that. I always strongly recommend you try it solo first, then teach someone else. I tried to do both at once and it wasn't great. Um, Really looking forward to playing this more, checking out the other heroes. So who do we have in here? We had um, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Iron Man, um, Captain Marvel, and She-Hulk. So those are the five characters you get uh, with four different, um, the other decks you combine with them, which I, I'm not going to remember them all. Aggression and justice and leadership and something else. Again, <laughs> um, all in the core box. All you need to start playing lots of expansion content out there. Looking forward to diving into this game deeper and especially sharing it with my podcast co-host who loves supers games. Um, looking forward to Sean checking this out. Now, speaking of our podcast, that is the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. You can also find us at tabletopbellhop.com and all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop. One word on pretty much every form of social media. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. Have a good day and game on.